Well, I believe we are starting. Mr. Spears, are we ready to start? Yep, all ready. Great. Welcome, everyone. Um, this is really nice to be able to welcome you to our virtual sixth form opening open day uh, or open evening. Um, it's a little bit odd because obviously I can't see you and you can't see each other, but it's what we have, it's what we can do at this time. Hopefully, if you do want to join the school and you are not currently in our year 11, then um, later on in the year, you'll be able to come and have a look around it for yourself. Uh, but here we are, we're in COVID times. So please do take in as much information as you can during this open evening and do ask any questions that you have in the chat. Mr. Lewis, our um, assistant head, who's in charge of sit form, he is going to answer those questions as we go. So first of all, um, thank you for coming to the open evening. Thank you to all our current year 11s. Um, it's really nice that you made the effort to come tonight. Uh, and especially thank you to all those students who have not been a student at UAE South Bank before. Um, it's great that you're doing this. It's really good that you are making the effort to visit a variety of sit forms before you make the decision as to where you go next year. And it's a really important decision for you to make. It makes a huge difference um, to your lives, particularly since in two years time, you'll be making that choice of your destination and you need to make sure you can get to the destination that you want, whether that be going on to industry or commerce with a BTEC or vocational qualifications to do an apprenticeship or whether that's to go through the A-level route to university. So things that you need to know. First of all, what courses do we offer and are those the courses that you want to do? Well, that's the information that you'll be getting soon uh, from Mr. Lewis and Mr. Young. So please do make sure you understand before the end of this evening what courses we offer at UAE South Bank. And this year we've got more courses than ever on offer and that's quite exciting. We've got a few new courses because our sixth form is expanding quite rapidly. In our year 13, we only have 33 students uh, and in our year, year 12, we have 65 students and in year 12 next year, your year, we're going to be accepting 75 students. So the next thing you need to think is, is this sixth form gonna help me be successful in the courses that I choose? Well, I believe it will be, and we have evidence for that. Last year, all of our year 13 students were accepted onto their university of choice or onto the apprenticeship that they chose to join. Four students this year have been interviewed for Oxford or Cambridge. Three have got a place at medical college and five have secured paid apprenticeships already before they've even got those teacher assessed grades for their A-levels. Um, and that's just from a cohort of 33. So how do we make sure that you are so successful? Well, there's a huge amount of support that we offer. Um, we have a lot of links with industry um, and they provide work experience opportunities, um, site visits, visits to their places of work, and they also come in to work with our students. We're also sponsored by a university. Uh, that's South Bank University. We don't expect you necessarily to go there unless you want to, but what we do do is we give you visits to that university so you understand how to get there. And their admissions team actually work with you on your university applications. So just to make sure that they're, you're writing the things that university admissions teams want to see. We have a suite of quiet workspaces and we've got a new terrace garden. It's a lovely area, our sixth form area, and that's just for you. It's kept away from the rest of the students in the school. We give you all a Chromebook when you start and that's yours for two years. Um, you get the Chromebook to keep. We give you support from companies like Salesforce who sponsor the school as well. Um, they're actually running a careers day for all of our students this Friday. We have support from Circle and the Access Project, Access Aspiration and other partners. And finally, what's life like in our sixth form and why would it be different from anywhere else? Well, I think the first thing is that we're quite small. We will, as I said, only have 75 students be given places this year. 
And that means that we know you all as individuals. It means that we can give you a personalized and tailored support package through these crucial years of your education. It makes a huge difference. If you come to our sick form, you'll find it's friendly and you'll feel, you won't feel anonymous. You'll feel people really know you and your teachers really understand you and understand what you need to do well in your courses. And for that reason, the students are very happy here. So I think that's all I'm going to say. I'm now going to introduce Mr. Lewis and Mr. Young. So you can see Mr. Young here. Mr. Young is our head of sixth form. He'll be talking to you in a moment. And is Mr. Lewis here? Good evening. Evening, everyone. Okay. I'll, um, I'll hand off. I'm Mr. Lewis, an assistant principal who line manages um, the sixth form. Uh, and I'm going to hand over now to Mr. Young, who's our head of sixth form, and he'll take us through a presentation about various opportunities that you can have in the sixth form. Thank you very much, Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. So, um, as has been said by Mr. Lewis, I am the head of sixth form. So, I am essentially the person that you'll be seeing day in, day out to support you with any academic um, issues that might have or concerns and anything to do with pastoral care. I am the person that you will speak to and I can support you. Um, so, uh, welcome very much um, to. Uh, our virtual open evening today. I hope that you will get all the information that you need today. If you've got any questions at all, as I'm going through the slides and chatting to you, please do write it in the chat and Mr. Lewis will uh, answer all your questions. So, um, so some um, policies for you to be aware of. Okay, so we've got a dress code. Yeah, so our dress code is our business attire. Um, we expect all students to have an attendance of 96% and very good punctuality. We've also got a code of conduct and that code of conduct is different from lower school. Okay, so there's some things that are very different to lower school to make sure that we support you because we understand that you are a lot older and you need that room to be able to um, make your own mistakes, um, learn and um, mature while you're with us. Uh, we've also got independent learning guidance. Essentially, you have, when you're in school at the moment, you don't have any uh, non contact time or what you would refer to as three periods. When you're in sixth form of college, you have approximately 10 hours a week of non-contact time. What that means is um, we'll give you guidance during this non-contact time um, on how you can use your time wisely. And it might involve either being in uh, a quiet room that we have, uh, we've also got a library, or even being in the common room or terrace. Um, so our six form day starts at 8.30 to 3.30 p.m. Yeah, and you can leave the um, premises for lunch. Uh, once you've got very good attendance and punctuality, uh, after your first uh, term with us, we look back at um, how you've done and then we can see whether we can give you uh, allowance to either go out um, during period six, either to um, the gym or to the library. Uh, but uh, I'll talk a bit more about that later. Okay, so what are our strengths? Essentially, what are we doing really well? And uh, we'll, we feel that it sets us apart from the rest of the sixth form um, colleges and sixth forms around us. So we have uh, a very good student ratio in the A-level classes. Um, on average, it's about um, one to eight per class. Um, and the fact that we have so many new A-level um, offerings and um, vocational courses coming in, it means that uh, you will be in classes that you feel really comfortable in, how uh, you have more time to really get to know um, students in your classroom, you get to know your teacher, and essentially those teachers are gonna be there to support you for the next two years. 
We've got a strong vocational employer links, as was mentioned before uh, by Mr. Taylor. We've got excellent track record of destinations. Uh, we invest in personal development. So we've got um, a very um, clear pathway in terms of what we feel that you need to know um, outside of your lessons in terms of your pastoral care to help you um, to grow as a person. So it's not just about academics, but it's about guidance for you to continue to develop. We've also got a dedicated careers lead um, for the sixth form. And we also work with the Access Project. And I'm going to talk about that later on. Um, we've got links to um, London South Bank University. And we are also part of the South Bank schools. So this gives us a very good platform to um, give you the right resources and give you the best experience while you're with us. And that's why essentially some of the things that I'm mentioning is what sets us apart from everyone else. That's why students are genuinely really happy with the choices that they've made. Uh, we've got uh, very good leadership programs in Rugby Centurion. I'm gonna talk about that later and Circle as well. Uh, we've got excellent university applications, including uh, Oxford and Cambridge for the last two years. So if you can imagine the fact that we have only been a sixth form in the last three years or so, and yet we've got um, many students applying um, to uh, Oxbridge. That means that we are definitely doing something right and we are guiding our students in the right way. Um, we've also got a bursary. Uh, so any student who is entitled to free school meals will get a bursary. Uh, that means that you will get between uh, 150 to 300 pounds every single year. Yeah, and we've also got a hardship fund. So at any point, if you have uh, any financial difficulties, even though you're not free school meals, uh, you can talk to me, let me know uh, what is bothering you or what the situation is. And uh, obviously that remains between us and then uh, you will get a hardship fund. So some, some of the things that the hardship fund is used for are students, maybe they want to um, buy a blazer, maybe, um, use um, to um, access public transport. We've also got small tutor groups with a personalized approach. Uh, we used a company called um, Your Life Journey and um, essentially they support you really well in providing these excellent resources um, that will guide you over the next two years. We've also got amazing tutors Will support, will support you. They know any issues that you're having and they're the first port of call. Essentially, if you've got any concerns, uh, you speak to your tutors and they're very quick to um, contact me and then we can see how we can support you. Uh, lastly, we've got an excellent undergraduate um, style of personal tutors who will support you to ensure that you um, apply to the right courses, you have an excellent personal statement. And if you have any ed other extra issues or concerns, they will guide you to make sure that you can uh, transition into university without any difficulties. Please, if you've got any questions on what I've covered so far, um, please do write it in the chat and Mr. Lewis will uh, respond to your questions. Okay, so uh, I've got a video here um, that will give you um, an overview of how our facilities are. But just to reiterate what Mr. Taylor mentioned earlier is that you have your own six form floor. Okay, the whole floor is yours and you can use that as, um, as you please. Yeah, obviously with our guidance and there's a different code of conduct when you're in the sixth form area. So if you're an external student, you have the opportunity to sort of see what we have to offer. Um, if anyone cannot hear the video we are about to play, please do comment in the chat and I will fix that. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, sir. Joining us in September. Welcome. If you are already at UAE, welcome back. If you are joining us new in sixth form, this may be the first time you are seeing our school building. If you are already a UAE student, this will be more familiar. However, as a sixth form student, your school experience within the building will be different. Specifically, you will spend far more time in your designated sixth form area. We want to take this opportunity to show you all around. This is the main school entrance where all sixth formers use their student cards to tap into school and tap out when they leave. In sixth form, you'll be able to go off site for lunch, to use gym facilities at South Bank University and for other enrichment activities. You will always sign in and out of school here. So you can see that the school is split into two halves. The main building is on the right and the retained building is on the left. The retained building dates back to Victorian times. The main building is only six years old. Now the sixth form designated area is based in the retained building, but first let's explore the rest of the school. Right in the heart of the school, we have the theatre where we come together for assemblies and performance events like UAE's Got Talent and the annual show. In sixth form, assemblies are not actually held here, um, but in the sixth form study space, which you will see later. But we may still use this space if an outsider speaker comes in for a talk or if we're running a workshop. If we continue through the school, you can see the large main atrium or open spaces here which is used mainly by the lower school, both for lessons and at social times. On the ground floor is where design and engineering is taught. And you can see some of our fantastic facilities here. Computer science is also taught on the ground floor. And finally, the ground floor in the main building is also where we have our art room. If we go upstairs to the first floor of the main building, we have the science department for students studying physics, chemistry and biology. If we continue up to the second floor, we find all our humanities subject classes. So for history, geography, RE, sociology, Spanish, and music. Finally, on the third floor, we have some small classrooms where students can receive extra support. And this is also where our amazing rooftop community garden is located. So the outside playground is where most of the lower school spends their breaks and lunch times. Um, in the sixth form, you sort of have your own um, space upstairs to be able to spend that time. So you might be spending a little bit less time here um, than you did in year 11. Um, but in the sixth form, you can choose to come out here to play sport as part of your weekly enrichment. Um, so that might be football, basketball, and table tennis, etc. And as you can see, there's lots of space. So we're just coming now into the sports hall where there are classes and that you can take in yoga and fitness. Next, we'll make our way into the dining area where you can either buy a delicious two course hot meal or eat your own packed lunch at lunchtime. If you're a current student at UAE, you will know that we have community dining where students serve each other at their tables. In sixth form, however, you can go straight to the patch to pick up your meal along with the teachers and other staff. Next to the dining room in the retained building, there is the library. Um, sixth formers can use this space um, for independent study um, if it's not being used for classes in lesson time. 
and you can come here after school too to complete work. If we make our way upstairs to the first floor of the retained building, the older building, um, we have the English department as well as the drama department. So if you're taking either of those subjects, you'll be based here. And if we make our way up to the second floor of the retained building, we have the maths department. Again, if you're taking maths, this will be where you're located. And finally, on the top floor of the retained building is where you will find the sixth form study areas. This is an area uniquely for you as sixth formers. Students lower down the schools are not permitted here. The sixth form has their own rooftop space to socialise and study outside during the warmer months of the year. And this is the main sixth form study space where assemblies for sixth form are held and where students study outside of lessons. We also have one-to-one -one tuition programmes such as Coach Bright, which run in here after school. There are computers and laptops available for you to use. And this is just a quiet academic environment where the sixth form support officer, aka me, is based to register you and be a point of contact to help. So as well as the sixth form study area, we have the silent study room, and this is where students can work in complete silence during independent study and after school. Thank you very much, sir. So, um, yeah, so that's um, a really good um, overview about um, of what facilities we have. Um, so, um, as mentioned, we have a sixth form only space, um, which includes, if you do use the sports hall, you have um, an, um, no lower school join you then. So you have blocked out sessions where you can use um, the MAGA for football or basketball or any other um, sports that you want to um, take part in. Each student has their own Chromebook and a chargeable locker. There's also a loan system for an extra Chromebook if you need a Chromebook to have at home as well, uh, because we do understand that um, as a sixth former, you, you, you might not always be able to complete all your studies in school and you need to, um, work a lot harder while you're at home. Um, we have a group study room uh, where you can work with your peers, um, but as you do so, you always do it quietly. And um, that is the culture that we have there. Essentially, you don't, you, you just find that from when you join in, uh, everyone works really calmly uh, in groups and they support each other. We've also got what we call the silent room or the six from library room, where you work independently and uh, you'll be told when you are supposed to be scheduled in there. Uh, we've also got a roof terrace garden used as a social space. Um, just something else to also mention, we have a common room and the common room and the roof terrace is currently being refurbished. So you can be able to, um, to get, because we do understand that as a, as, as a student as well, you need that social space. You, um, you need to socialize with your peers after working really hard in, in your lessons. And so we, we, we are currently working with um, an architect to make sure that we have the best possible room for you to be able to actually relax and wind down. Uh, you've also got uh, the Access Project one-to-one -one, um, tutoring, uh, which takes place um, in the sixth form office as well. So um, what do we specialize in? So our curriculum is divided into uh, this five different areas. We've got humanities, uh, and I'm going to go through all the subjects that fall under each specialism after this. You have business and economics, you've got digital media and computing, you've got the creative arts, and you've got science and maths. Our partnerships, so uh, as mentioned by Mr. Taylor, we, we work with um, a lot of um, partners and for different um, 
activities or initiatives or programs with sixth formers and also lower school. So we've got Salesforce, which is an excellent partnership. And uh, at the moment, we're looking at how we can ensure that you have that experience of employer engagement while you're with us. Rugby, Rugby Centurion is um, an excellent leadership program that you, when you start, all students are given login details to access the Rugby Centurion, and you essentially get the best rugby players in the country talking to you about how you can develop your leadership qualities, um, how you can become more independent, how you can become more ambitious and how you can achieve and maximize the opportunities that are available to you. Uh, that is done via um, online and um, you have different days where you'll be working on this and I am uh, your main point, point of contact. So I will be checking in with you and seeing how it's all going. And ultimately at the end of this, you get a certificate out of that. As we mentioned as well, we have um, the Construction Youth Trust. Uh, the Construction Youth Trust is uh, an amazing charity that works uh, with us to ensure that we, we give you opportunities to access the engineering sector. So during your tutor time, you'll be involved in interviews. Um, you will you'll get to meet uh, different apprentices or different graduates from different universities, and then they can give you their view of um, how it is like to be an apprentice. Uh, we've got Circle as well, we, um, and they offer a fantastic leadership program. Um, I'm going to play you a video after this so that you can see um, what they have in offer. We've got the Access Project, and essentially the Access Project is geared towards uh, supporting our students to access the best universities in the country. What that means is they, they will work with you on a one-to-one. -one. You will actually have a coach um, after school or during your non-contact time periods, where, as you can imagine, having a one-to-one -one tutor, it's very expensive. So this tutor will, will do that for you and they will support you in addition to the lessons that you have. And it's a very popular um, partnership um, and most students are really striving to um, get onto the Access Project and to go to the best universities. We don't want you to just settle for uh, any university. We want you to aim as high as you can. Uh, we have Unifrog and Unifrog essentially is a, a one-stop shop that gives you all the information that you need for the best apprenticeships um, and the best universities. So you, you work on, you, you will have you have your um, login details um, passed on to you from when you start. And then what you would do is you will, uh, you can apply for the different apprenticeships that you have, want to um, get into or different university courses. And it just narrows everything down for you. Um, you can also complete your university application there and your tutors, um, your teachers, myself, Mr. Lewis, everyone has access to Unifrog so we can see how we need to support you. Uh, we've also got um, Access Aspiration, which is uh, linking young people and businesses. So you can get um, opportunities to have work experience. I know it's really hard at the moment to have uh, work experience and going into a company, but you can actually do it virtually. So um, during the last few weeks, a lot of our students are involved in um, virtual work experience days. Uh, we have uh, London South Bank University um, and uh, they, the fact that we are linked to our university means that we can give you the best information um, that you need in order for you to apply to university for you to choose your course. And they give you, every two weeks they will give you information and they'll have workshops to help you with this process. Um, again, we've got a partnership with Oxford and, and um, Cambridge, and that is uh, linked to Unifrog and also linked to the Access Project. We want our students to continue to apply to the best and will support you in order to do so. Uh, your Life Journey is a, a pastoral uh, platform where when you go for tutor time, you have days where uh, 
you will go through different themes. It could be learning about credit cards. It could be uh, learning about uh, sexual health. It could be about um, having ambition and um, they will, and then following on from uh, the video that you might watch, you would have discussions with your peers, have discussions with your tutors. And uh, it's really popular. And a lot of the year 12s always look forward to attending um, tutor time because they find it actually really meaningful because there's a purpose to it and there's a clear direction of where you, you need to start and where we think that you need to end up. And you can see your own progression every single lesson. We're also building and continue to expand uh, our partnerships. So um, at the moment, we're discussing with Ofcom, who um, the, the, the dream is to give our students the opportunity to be able to tap into um, level four, level five uh, apprenticeships and have that uh, employer engagement of the highest quality. So um, a bit more about Circle um, is on this video. So um, I'll, I'll let you have a look. Learn to lead alongside professionals from top businesses such as Facebook, Google, Uber, HelloFresh, Innocent, and more. On the Circle program, you'll earn a management level qualification in coaching and leadership skills, whilst learning alongside high-flying professionals and other future leaders. If you don't know a lot about coaching, it's all about empowerment and helping yourself and other people to set and achieve ambitious goals. It's a fresh and modern approach to leadership. You'll be matched one-to-one -one with a professional based on your interests, personality, and goals. There are six 90-minute group workshops that are run over Zoom, with each session focusing on a different skill of coaching. In between each workshop, you and your one-to-one -one match arrange a 60-minute video call to coach each other and apply the skills you've learned. The program lasts between three and five months, and there's a weekly time commitment of between one and two hours. At the end of the Circle program, you'll receive our Leader as Coach certification that's awarded by the Association for Coaching. This usually costs over a thousand pounds, but it's free for our future leaders. It looks amazing on your CV, and it's a great talking point in interviews. Don't forget to click below to register your interest. Learn to lead a lot. Learn to lead alongside much, professionals from top business. Right, thank you. So um, at the moment, we're really excited about um, our partnership with Circle. As we stand, we've got um, 15 students who um, have applied to um, the Circle Leadership Programme and they will get coaching from the best companies out there. So imagine the fact that by the time you leave, you will be a qualified um, coach and a leader from using the different um, uh, partnerships that we have. You've got, uh, as I mentioned before, you've got Circle as well. Uh, and you've also got Rugby Centurion among um, other different leadership programs that we have that you will actually enjoy um, taking part in. Uh, we, I mentioned about the Access Project, so I'll give you a bit of an overview of what the Access Project is about. Um, so um, do have a listen and if you've got any questions, please don't forget to write them in the chat. Thank you. Young people don't lack motivation or aspiration. They all want to be successful. The issue some of our young people have is that they don't know how to get there. Before I actually started the Access Project, I was getting like top Cs, maybe low Bs. And then I just knew I wanted to get a bit higher than this. So when I started the Access Project, it slowly improved and then by the end I came out with an A in maths. When I leave school I hope to go to university and then in the future be an architect. No one in my family has really been to university. I think maybe a distant cousin or something but I'm quite excited as 
like I said, not many people in my family have gone, so it would be quite a big thing to actually be one of the first. The Access Project is a charity that works with young people. Um, so we work to help young people from disadvantaged backgrounds to get to highly selective universities. We do this um, in two ways. The main way is that we match students up with a volunteer tutor. Uh, that's a one-to-one -one relationship. And their tutor helps them to improve their grades. The second thing we do is we work directly in schools to support students to make the right decisions at the right time. So we give them information and advice on applying to highly selective universities and what that means. Callum would come here once a week, normally for about an hour, sometimes a bit longer, and we'll pick a subject to work through, either working through the syllabus or if it's something he's particularly wants to concentrate on when he's done in class. And I can spend a bit of time talking about any problem areas he's got, we can work through some practice questions, we can look at sort of areas of exam technique and how it would be tested going forward. Seeing Callum being successful means an awful lot to me, partly because I've seen how much effort he's put in over the last two years. He's really worked uh, to achieve good grades and he very much deserves them. Giving back to the society in that way, it's, it's something that an individual would cherish to know that you helped a student get to where they are today. I know I still talk to my um, my tutor and I, she still advises me till today on how I could get possible internships. I think they would really be contributing towards the future generation's development because what you contributed it, um, today is what you're going to see later on. The sort of interaction between the students and uh, the, the young professionals that I work with has been enormously beneficial in all sorts of uh, other ways in terms of the softer skills they develop, in terms of confidence, professional language, the way they present themselves. Bottom line is it's provided uh, students with one-to-one -one tutoring, which has enabled them to get very good results. If you come from the most disadvantaged fifth of the population, you're something like six times less likely to progress on to one of the top universities than you are if you come from the most advantaged fifth of the population. So although that gap is getting smaller all the time, it's still something really important to tackle. I think it's incredibly helpful to come somewhere like KPMG or one of the other firms on Canary Wharf. Right, thank you very much, sir. Okay, so um, the Access Project is really amazing. And the thing for you to take away from that is um, you will have a one-to-one -one coach that is in an industry that you want to get into. If you want to become an engineer, if you want to become uh, a business consultant, whichever job you want to get into, if you want to become a doctor, you will have um, a tutor who is working in that role and they will organize with you and liaise with you when uh, you can have this one-to-one -one, um, tutor, tutor sessions. So essentially they want to give back and they want to develop you so that you can uh, become the best version of yourself. Um, so um, an overview of what the, I know a lot of you have applied to um, either A-levels or B-techs or C-techs or a combination of both. So I'm going to, um, um, give you an overview of what the main differences are. So the, um, what is an A-level course? It is hugely different uh, from um, GCSE. A-level classes are a lot smaller. You see more than one subject specialist teacher several times a week. So you, you have a very good uh, working relationship uh, with your teachers. Uh, normally you have between three to four teachers. Um, as a level three student, whether you're studying um, A levels or B techs. Uh, teachers do not spoon feed. So, what teachers do is they teach you the content, they direct, advise, and they facilitate and encourage you to be independent and to self regulate and to learn, take what you've, take what you've learned in the classroom and apply it during your independent study, which I discussed before. And um, another difference between your GCSEs, uh, you prepare for your GCSEs essentially from when you walk in into year seven. What happens is you have two years and at the end of the two years, you will sit your official external uh, assessments. However, in between we'll have different milestones, we'll have assessments and discussions um, to make you aware of where you're at, where you need to get to and the deficit that you need to make in order for you to um, either achieve your target grades or exceed them.
Okay, the other pathway that we have are BTEX or CTEX. So BTEX is by Pearson's and um, CTEX is by OCR. And how are BTEX different from A-levels? The qualification is a mixture of coursework, practical exams, um, and written exams. Every piece of coursework that you complete from when you walk in into um, year 12 will go towards your final grade in year 12. So it's really important that you meet those deadlines and you, um, you work on your coursework at all times and also extend your learning outside the classroom that is during your independent learning, ensuring that you are following the guidance that has been given to you by your teachers. Uh, each unit is either graded a pass, a merit or a distinction. Uh, and you're essentially responsible for your learning, you plan your work, you carry out your research and regularly review your progress. All of this occurs while you are being guided by your teachers. What A-level subjects do we offer under the five specialisms that I discussed before? So we have A-level art, biology, business, chemistry, computer science, drama, economics. We have the extended project qualification, which is uh, uh, run by Mr. Lewis, and that is equivalent to half an A-level and anyone can um, take part in the extended project. Uh, we also have English language and literature, which is a combination of both, which gives you that balance. So um, you, you can um, continue to enjoy the subjects that you want, but also um, it, it gives you the options to, because the English language and literature combines very well with other um, art subjects. Okay, uh, we also have geography, history, physics, psychology, product design, Spanish and sociology. As you can see, as many of you have mentioned in the emails, we, hope we offer one of the widest ranges of A-level subjects that you can, um, you can apply for. And as you can see, we are also extending that into our vocational courses as well. What vocational courses do we have? We have the BTEC Extended Certificate in Music Performance, which is equivalent to one A-level. Um, and in order for you to do that, what you need to do is have an interest in music, be able to play a musical interest instrument, or also be able to perform. Um, we also have a CTEC diploma in, di in, in digital media, which is equivalent to A-levels. And to get your third A-level, there will be, as I've seen uh, Mr. Lewis mentioning about the blocks, um, you, you will have a select number of A-level subjects that you can choose from. We also have the uh, BTEC Extended Diploma in Business, which is equivalent to three A-levels. And we also offer the BTEC Diploma in Business, which is a level, um, which is equivalent to two A-levels. Uh, what are our new subjects um, out of all the ones that we have mentioned? Uh, our new subjects are music, digital media, uh, BTEC business, A-level art and Spanish. The reason that we have uh, introduced uh, more vocational options is because um, we will no longer be running our engineering. The reason for that being that we feel that most stu students from our experience that um, the BTEC in engineering makes you specialize into a role of um, a technician and there's nothing wrong with that. However, we feel that the offerings that we will give you will, will be able to lead you to apply for engineering um, once you leave um, the sixth form. Remember, in order for you to be an engineer, you will need to um, study uh, engineering at university and you will need to take specific subjects such as physics and maths. So um, we feel that what we have on here will, will give you the best opportunities for you to enjoy a subject that will, that will broaden, broaden your horizons and give you much more opportunities to study whichever subjects you choose to after you leave um, 
UAE South Bank. Um, we also have our employer interactions. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, while you're with us, the main takeaway for you is that you will be, you will have opportunities to work with employers and you will get to meet uh, individuals who are in the role that you want to be when you're older. And the fact that we're a small sixth form means that those opportunities are a lot more frequent than in other sixth forms. You will have um, opportunities to take part in panel interviews and tours and also apply to competitive work experiences while you're with us. Okay, so um, many of you have applied um, to join with us. Uh, if not, this is how you apply. You need to go online and we've got an online form and the online form has uh, our new subject offering. If you have contacted me about um, the fact that we have new subjects or engineering is, is in an option for you next year. You can choose from uh, all the subjects that I have um, provided to you. I will look at your details and within uh, two weeks, you will get a response from me. And we'll contact you in order for you to have um, your interview date. So as of tomorrow, we'll be starting all the interviews and this will be taking place between now and April the 1st. So please do make sure that you complete a form. If, you have, if you've completed a form and you want to make a different choice, uh, the, the best way forward is to email me and uh, I, will, I will change it for you without having to go through the whole process again. Um, if you have any questions regarding uh, what, what has been mentioned today, please do email me uh, on peter.young at UAE Southbank and I will get back to you. Thank you very much. So we're going to open the floor for any questions um, that you might have. Thank you. If anybody has any questions, feel free to, to speak or, or type them in the chat or the Q&A. The um, open evening page link is on the website. Um, uh, so yes, there's been a couple of questions about um, dyslexia. So we have a very strong SEND department um, who have a lot of experience in dyslexia. Uh, so dyslexia is something that we are uh, we're able to support fully in the school. Uh, when we've had students in the current in the sixth form, and also gone through the sixth form, being very successful uh, with dyslexia. So that shouldn't be a barrier of any shape or form to you coming to the sixth form. We will support, and also as we have small sixth forms, a small classes, uh, we'll be able to support you uh, really well with the sixth form. So please don't worry about that. Um, uh, the application form, there is an application for if you haven't already applied or if you wish to apply for the new um, courses, there is a link on the Open Evening page, uh, which are um, which will be um, available at the end of this, um, later on this evening, and also will be emailed to everyone this year as well. And if you click on that link, I'll take you through to a Google form application form. If you're already filled in and you don't want to change, don't worry about refilling it in, it's fine. Everybody who has applied will be interviewed or contacted over the next few weeks. Um, so that, that's, that's not a problem. If you haven't applied, then there will be a link emailed to you and it'll also be a link available on the website. And just to reiterate on what, Mer what Mr. Lewis said is tomorrow, tomorrow everyone will be getting an email with all of the information you need to apply. Um, so you'll have all of the relevant links to where you'll be able to find more information about the courses and you'll be able to get a direct link for the application form and it will also have the relevant contacts um, there that you'll need should you run into any issues. Um, yeah, regards to the interview, don't worry about the interview. It's about us to try and get to know you a little better um, and make sure that the... Um, find a bit more about, if, you, if you're not part of the school, find a little bit more about, about you. 
and also to look at the choices that you put and to make sure that you are to help you on the, on the correct pathway. Um, in terms of um, the uh, office, not too late if you have the offer, no. Lunchtime is an hour. Um, last few years, it's been from 12.30 to 1.30. We do have a split lunch in the school. Um, and in the last few years, the time table is uh, year 12 or 13, normally have the first lunchtime, which is at the same time as year seven and year eight, these days three. And if yeah, I said it's from 12.30 to 1.30. Yeah, and ju just to add to what Mr. Lewis has mentioned, when you do have lunch, you do sit um, separate um, to the rest of the school and you, you get to sit with members of staff. You're in the same area as the members of staff because you're young adults. You're also able to leave the site during lunchtime as well as you um, Do you get the tensions? Um, it's a slightly different system in the sixth form in that obviously we have high expectations of you and expect that all work gets completed and that you work outside of lessons. Um, there have been, you know, we, we, if something is an issue, you're, like Mr. Young said, you're a young adult, so you are um, we're expected really to have conversations with your members of staff explain situations and work through issues. Obviously, there are sanctions in the sixth form, but they're very rarely used. It's more of um, a way of, of uh, having being adults and having um, adult conversations with uh, staff and explaining things. But also, if you're in the sixth form, we do it so if you want to do it, you're passionate about it. So we would expect that you would want to do the work and extra work on top, so I can't see that ever being a problem. Um, Yes, you are at a community with your groups. You're not put away, you're not um, put into a, into a into a cocoon or a shell and kept away. You have your own floor, which other users are not allowed to come on to. So you have your own space, but that doesn't mean you're not allowed into. Not, and actually, we would actually, actually encourage you know, mentoring of younger students and so on. You are role models for the rest of the school, um, and people look up to you. So it's the way in which you conduct yourselves around the school is very very important. Uh, but yeah, we would actually encourage you to be positive role models for others around the school. Um, just to add, thank you very much, sir. Just to add to what Mr. Lewis has also mentioned, I can see Shante has asked a question regarding South Bank University and accessing uh, their site. Um, you can also use their gym. So from when you join us, you get free membership. And you, um, if you've got very good attendance and punctuality, you, after the first time, you can use um, period six to also use um, their university or their library. So we're, we're con continuously um, looking at um, how we can use our partnership to give you that experience of university as much as possible. And obviously we are a young and a, and a growing six form. One thing you will have as well, would you listen closely to, to your feedback while you're there? You know, the, the leadership and the student leadership team that, that we have in the sixth form is very, very important. The student voice is very important. So if you um, so there are issues that come up, please do speak to us and we'll work with you because we are said we're still we're still involved in the sixth form. Um, also I saw um a question before regarding what was it? So regards to, sorry, where you're looking at the end, regards no, it's, to it's fine. Uh, books and paper and so on are provided, you will need to provide your own pens and pencils and so on. Um, if that is an issue, then, then obviously speak to us. But books and paper and so on, that will be provided. Um, yes. Library, yes, we are working on um, allowing you to attend the library. There's one or two small technical issues we have to get around, uh, but it's something that we've been fed back on, and we are looking to hopefully uh, Get your access to the library over the next year or so. Um, Alia, one, one um, good question about the blazer. We are actually, so most students are expected to have a blazer. And the main reason for that, or a smart jacket, is because we, your role models in the school and everyone else is wearing a blazer. If there is any question regarding uh, um, the cost of a blazer, we'll help you with that. But essentially, when you are walking around the school, um, no one expects you to have your blazer on as you're walking around the school because um, and but it's something that we're going to review and um, but um, nothing should exclude you from uh, joining us and we'll support you to make sure that it is not a problem and that 
every cohort is actually happy with the systems that we have. So we'll be really clear before you start what the dress code is. We'll give you an opportunity to uh, voice your opinion on the dress code. But the one thing that will, is always expected is you always have to be dressed um, smartly and presentable. Assume that you're going for a job interview every single time when you come to sixth form and then everything is all good after that. Um, I've just seen a question about the library. Uh, I'm assuming you're referring to the um, to to the UAE's library um, yeah. and London South Bank University. So we have our own library at UAE, um, which we obviously encourage you to use. But if your question was related to London South Bank University's library, uh, I believe that you do have access to that. And currently we are doing um, a, a piece of work to try and see if we can get all of our students access to South Banks University's online library, um, which is essentially just a digital archive of every book you could possibly ever need for free. Um, but obviously, we, this isn't confirmed yet, so we can't guarantee it. Um, but who knows, hopefully by September, next year you might have access to their online library as well which would save you time and money as you wouldn't have to travel there yeah thank you very much sir um just to also reiterate um was uh, mr mr taylor mentioned that um and mr lewis as well um it's it's in regards to the question about what time do do we finish or what time do students normally leave the site um, I think Mr. Lewis can agree with this. Most of our sixth formers actually love the sixth form so much, they normally do not want to leave the building. But um, a lot of the time, once it's 3.30 and you want to stay back, uh, most teachers do remain in the building. So I'm normally on the sixth form floor. So you can stay on to um, the sixth form until 5.30. And then after that, um, you, you have to uh, leave because... Um, yeah. And we would always encourage you to kind of stay in when you have free periods to make sure you're on top of your work. Um, and also for things like your mental health and uh, personal well being, having access to a gym and outdoor sports facilities as well as indoor sports facilities is such a great opportunity that you just, that if personally, if it was me, I would make. Um, the most of those opportunities yeah thank you sir um the question regarding um civil engineering if you want to study civil engineering or any form of engineering you don't have to study the btech in engineering um but what you will need to do is you need to study um it depends on if you actually want to be a civil engineer, you will need to study maths and physics. If you want to study, if you want to work um, in the engineering field as um, a technician or um, have another role within engineering because you really enjoy and you have a passion for it, you can still apply to the courses that we have. We still have courses that are related to um, engineering um, such as product design and also do remember that we still have um, a massive bank of employers who are related to engineering because when we did start we were an engineering school so um, you will still get um, people coming in employers discussing with you routes to engineering so do look at um, the, the new offerings that we have or look at the A-level option if that is an option for you and then or, or contact me on our one-to-one -one, and then I can give you a guidance on that as well. Are there any enrichments after school or during school? So um, in terms of enrichment extracurricular we have the academic extracurricular activities that I mentioned such as the Access Project. We've also got um, we've also got um, extracurricular 
leadership activities. But if you mean things like sports, football, yeah, you all you have to do, because we're such a small sex form, is uh, think about what enrichment program you'd like to have and actually run or be a part of. Um, and we can timetable that into your, um, your non-contact time or free period as most students call it. And then you can use that to um, take part in either sports. Uh, something that is really popular in, in the sixth form at the moment in the common room is chess um, and checkers. So quite a lot of students are, are really um, doing that and taking that as part of their enrichment as well. So um, most of enrichments are during school. But also just let you know, again, we are very much in favor of student agency. So if there is something you particularly want to want to do and set that arrangement you want, then please do come speak to us and we'll do our best to help you set that up. Um, so we, in the past, we've had, a couple of years ago, we had a very strong um, uh, choir that was up and running in the sixth form. So it, it depends on, on again, we will do our best to try and support you in Revolution. Able to do it. Um, question from Sarah regarding, um, are we allowed piercings, eyelashes and a hair? um color yes you are allowed um but um in moderation so would you um have those piercings if you went for a job interview if the answer is no then you wouldn't um wear them into sixth form um, um also hair color um i don't think there is uh we the guidance is you should moderate the hair color in that if you were going to an interview, would you actually have that color of hair? Um, and then have a think about that. And but we, we'll have um, clear guidance in terms of uh, expectations. Um, but we also understand that you are a young adult and you need the space to be able to express yourself. But um, the main thing is it's within reason because you're also role models for the rest of the school. And we have a lot of external uh, visitors working with us, and we always want you to come across in the best possible light. I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to that, Mr. Lewis. I know that you, I think you summarised that up um, very well. Yeah. So like I said we 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 are we do understand that you are um, young adults, and so you want to express yourself. Like I said, like as Jeremy said, it's a prof it's a professional sex form. Um, so just bear in mind as we're going to work, uh, you're going to interview. Would you wear um, that we'll take a piercings or would your hair be that color? If so, absolutely fine. Um, any more questions? Um, could we change the subject we choose when we signed up if we don't want to do them anymore? Yes, you can. Um, you can either email me, um, Shante. I think I sent your conditional letter not too long ago. Um, I can um, change it for you, or you can fill in another form, and then um, I would do that. But uh, just remember, one thing to bear in mind is that the most important thing for you to focus on is your learning, getting back to school, um, getting used to being back in school, thinking about how, um, what you want to do is really important as well. And I'm not saying to put that to one side, but um, look at the subjects that you want to study. Look at the, um, the expected grades for that subject. Uh, think about, I always advise students to do two things, yeah? Think about whether you uh, have an interest in that subject, uh, a genuine interest in that subject because it's what you're going to study for two years. And then secondly, do you have the aptitude? Yeah, are you going to be able to genuinely uh, take part in that course without a lot of difficulties? And that is linked to the target grades are on there. So if you go onto the website, just under our curriculum, we've also got um, uh, on the sixth one page, we've got a section that says key stage five uh, grade requirements. If you go on there, you can see all the different subjects and what you need to study. On results day, if for instance, and I, I don't like to, if you get higher grades than you expected and you want to change, 
your options, of course you can still change it. But um, by that time, you will have the blocks and the blocks will guide you into whether the combination you want to study actually works. Uh, case in point being, at the moment, based on all the applications that we've had, we've created blocks. We've also created blocks, not just based on what you, um, the various applicants have, we've also looked at what, which subject traditionally goes with another one um, and what interest is a student who decides to study geography is likely to have. So there's different combinations and uh, well done to everyone because I can see you really researched and thought about it very well. Yeah, in the different combinations that you can have. And also don't let um, the fact that you have to choose um, if you if you want to specialize and choose business studies or specialize more in media, because it also gives you the option of uh, another two um, A levels, do that. But then think about what your third option is, which is the best option that goes with media. And it all comes from uh, your aptitude, your interest, and all that it's under the umbrella of which I which what do you want to do thereafter? It's not everyone knows what they want to do. Okay, so what you walk into sixth form, uh, you might think I want to I want to become an economist, for example, and then you might combine economics with sociology, um, or geography or business studies, and then you might think, wait a second, I might actually I actually think that I want to be a social worker because I've really enjoyed social work. So you can do that. If you have applied for the specialist such as uh, business studies, to go into those other careers, it's not limiting you. It's not a course that is limiting you to study. You can study more subjects you want to study at university unless you want to become a doctor, you want to go into medicine, or you want to go into engineering where you will need to have physics and maths. Uh, I've got two questions and a question and answer. Will you finish off by receiving invitation for interview? Um, yes, we will interview people. Yes, I'll uh, check that the, everything is... Um, a, you're still... Uh, most people that we've got an offer to will be interviewed. Uh, just check everything, that you're still happy with the options and so on that you that you provided. Uh, Mr Young will be in touch regarding that. Business, economics and maths, are they in separate blocks? Um, um, they They are. Yeah, yeah. I was about to check, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's actually a popular combination at the moment. Um, yeah, so we've got any other questions? Uh, like I said, if you do think of any questions, feel, please feel free to contact me. If you're an external student, I know this might be quite a lot to take on. So have a think about uh, what we have said before. And... Um, do contact me and I'll, I'll, I'll respond to you. I will be, um, con uh, I'll be conducting the interviews with all the external students and all senior leaders will be the ones who will be taking part in, um, I'll, uh, not only externals, but I will do all the external students and um, the rest of the senior leaders will do the internal um, interviews as well. So I've just got two questions that come up. Someone's been active, always recommend. Um, well, drama is obviously one of the ones that we would strongly recommend, uh, but also I'd actually just recommend if you want to have a, to have a conversation with um, our drama department, they'll be more than happy to set up a conversation with them uh, so you can talk to them because they'll be in a they'll be better position than myself to be able to, to answer that because that will obviously be very much down to um, the extra activity that he does, uh, what he's outside of school and so on. Um, the... Uh, William was asked about if more, if, say, if more students in a class can take. That's unlikely to happen. Um, it hasn't happened before because of the size of our sixth form. Because we have small classes, uh, we haven't come across that issue before. Uh, that does happen. We obviously um, we can approach that as a house, but and that's very, very unlikely to happen. Um, the page where uh, the open evening page will be. Um, Upload will be uploaded onto the website later on this evening. Uh, I've just got to upload this presentation, a couple of other items to it. So it'll be up and running uh, later on this evening. 
uh, by tomorrow morning at the latest. We could click on there, and that will have all the uh, information that you want. And they'll have the the course booklet. It'll have the summary of the grades you need to reach. It'll have a link to the application form, all the videos that were shown tonight, and so on. Um, just to um, expand on what Mr. Lewis said, um, so that just to be safe, we're going to say by 5 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, everybody who's who's applied and registered um, for this open evening will have received an email with all of the links to the information you need. Also, if if um. Yeah, so if, even if you didn't register for this open evening, just to add to what Mrs. Spire said as well, is that um, we, I will email every applicant um, all the same details that Mr. Lewis is going to upload. So if you know any, any of your friends who were unable to attend today for any reason, they will have all this information and it is actually being recorded. So they'll be able to hear some of the uh, questions that have been asked as well and then they can they can they can make up their mind if they've got any other questions or everything is very clear with an option to be able to reply to my email as well um with the uh dates of the interviews the, the original letters that were sent out our office manager miss padmore is currently in the process she started this afternoon she's sending out emails to all students um, over the next couple of days. Um, so I think, we, I think she started this afternoon, but it'll take a few days to get through them all. So do check your emails because there will be, um, a, there will be, there, there will be uh, a date and a time on there. On the interview, obviously the externals will be via Zoom or a Google Classroom. Um, the, there will be a link to Google Classroom in every one of the internal ones as well, because obviously there'll be a date and hopefully there will be no self-isolation or anything if it, if, it ha if it does happen then it, as you've got the google link in the email we'll still be able to conduct the uh the interview whether it's face to face or online so we'll do it irrespective yeah thank you very much sir after the interviews um your in your interviewer will tell you how you performed um and they will tell you what your the next steps are essentially you should be expecting uh, you've already received your conditional offer, so you won't get another conditional offer. What you will get is information regarding taster days. Okay, so you've got um, something to really look forward to. You can actually get to meet your teachers. You can get to meet the heads of department. You can get, um, you, you also have a, a chance to experience the subject that you have chosen. And the way we're going to do it, we're going to um, do it the last few years, um, it's gone really well, Mr. Lewis, hasn't it? Where we 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 design it like a bit of a carousel. So even though there's some subjects that you feel that I think I would I might enjoy that subject, but I'm not sure what that subject entails. You'll be able to actually attend that lesson, and you can get to um, uh, really see how it looks like. How does um, psychology look like how does how is it taught um how how um what how am i assessed how the how does the exam look like how, how was my experience in that lesson and most importantly you will have the opportunity to meet other students who you're going to be taking part you're going they're going to be part of your cohort or your lessons for the next many years so it's really important that you attend the taster days. They're always very popular. And the last couple of years, uh, we've also done um, a barbecue as well. So everything, I guess, is based on um, what happens in terms of COVID. Um, I don't know if we can have, Miss Lewis, can we have a virtual barbecue? I've never tried it before. <laughs> but we will, irrespective of what happens, the, um of what the restrictions are. We will find some way, obviously, of kind of keeping in touch, communicate with you, and also find some way of getting people together, whether it's face-to-face -face or virtually uh, before the end of the year. Yeah, um, I just had a bit of a brainwave um, about something that I did not mention. So when you start Sixth Form with us, you will have the Access Project graduation to take part in the rug, Rugby Centurion, There'll be different graduations for different programs that you're doing. 
but the main one that we are uh, we had planned for this year we don't know if we'll be able to go ahead is essentially when you leave year 13 we will have a graduation ceremony for you yeah so your parents will be able to attend a graduation ceremony with you you have the outfit the whole enchilada okay and you you can get to actually celebrate your success with the rest of your cohort so um that is something that is really exciting and i was really looking forward to and um i hope that it can still go ahead um but we just have to wait and see the most important thing at the moment is to keep everyone safe Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you all very much for, for attending. Uh, both myself and Mr. Yang have put our email addresses um, into the chat. So please, please, if any, any questions come to you um, in the next few days or weeks, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, we'll, I will get back in touch with you. Um, but thank you very much indeed for, for coming this evening and giving up your time to listen to us. To see, listen to us. And we look forward to seeing hopefully all of you in the sixth form in September. Thank you very much again from me as well. Uh, it's really good meeting you, hearing what your questions are, and then we're gonna think of how we can address them as well. If there are some areas that maybe we might not, I think all, all bases are covered, but you know, you can never say never. So we'll look back at that and see how we can continue to improve and do keep an eye out for your, um, through your emails, very important because that's how we are going to communicate with you. Okay, so uh, we'll just wait a bit. So um, that is the end of our virtual open evening. So um, we'll just wait and uh, as you guys start leaving the room and if you've got any um, questions, please still write them or wait um, until others have left. If you've got something, uh, or more of a personal nature that you've not been able to ask about in regards to your application. You can wait and we can have a chat about that. Otherwise, do take care and have a good evening or good night, actually. Uh,